Hey guys, how are ya? Um, I gotta confess something. Something happened a few weeks ago and it was just like, I was under this veil of influence, I guess. I was on my Instagram. I saw um, under Charlotte Tilbury's like uh, stories feed, there was the most gorgeous like little mini tutorial sort of of a um, Charlotte Tilbury makeup artist. She was working on a model and the girl looked like an absolute goddess. Like it was just the glow that the camera was picking up. I mean I just I couldn't get past it. I watched it multiple times. Um, I believe this whole sequence of like little demo clips is actually saved in Charlotte Tilbury's like how to highlight I think is what it's labeled. But it was just so good and I couldn't get past it and I thought okay there are a lot of things being used here that I've never tried maybe this is an opportunity to really just dive in and try a lot of different Charlotte Tilbury products I mean I feel like over the last few years I've tried my fair share it definitely hasn't been a brand that I've ignored or anything but as far as the foundation that was used um, a blush product that was used a palette like all these different things oh don't you love these these little things. There were a lot of like new to me things happening in that little tutorial and I just went for it. I went to Charlotte Tilbury's website. Um, I had looked at like Nordstrom and maybe Sephora too but they both didn't have everything I was looking for and also um, the Charlotte Tilbury website bundled some things that made it a little better deal. But what I want to do in this video now that like the dust is settled and I've come to my senses a little bit more, I want to talk about the elements of the look that I've feel are really spectacular and wonderful and also some of the things that I got that I feel like are sort of dupable in a sense like maybe not quite so unique like you could find some pretty good alternatives elsewhere. I'm gonna do the look for you and we'll just sort of discuss along the way but the prep steps I got these minis. They were my free gift on Charlotte's website. So I got the Magic Cream, which I have had this before, just skincare wise, but I had never tried the eye cream. And I was set to like buy the full size of this eye cream, but I decided I would just try it in the sample first. And I am really liking it so far. So I'm gonna go with the Magic Cream all over to begin with. We're gonna try to keep this as much like that little thing I saw in stories uh, as possible. I think the only thing I did not buy was brow stuff because I was like okay I'm, I'm happy enough with brows and I can achieve the very same like brow look and effect with what I have so I didn't buy new brow stuff darn near everything else is like what was used um, so the eye cream here it says eye cream to turn back the clock and I'd run out of my drunk elephant eye cream that I use here in the mornings and I've really enjoyed this because it's so hydrating but it doesn't seem to like have a negative effect on staying power of products throughout the day for me. Like it's not turning me into a total grease ball, but it's pretty intensive moisture. And I feel like concealer just wears great on top of this. So I think it's highly likely that I will purchase the full size of the eye cream. The foundation that was used in the little tutorial was called Light Wonder. And this is not like the newest foundation that she's got. I got it in shade five medium, just cause I don't know, as I was looking at the range, I thought it might suit me. But this is one of the things I gotta say, it's one of the things in the look that I absolutely am loving. I am so surprised at how much I'm enjoying this foundation. I use about like a large pearl sized amount, excuse me, um, and it does seem like, I don't know, I can see a little depth to it as I dot it around, but the coverage is really interestingly light. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely going beyond like tinted moisturizer and most BB creams, but not really as much as a lot of classic foundations, but yet it leaves my skin looking so beautiful. It's like gives it this natural kind of sheen that's not like fake luminosity, like packed with shimmer. No, it's not that kind of product. Do you see the glow that's kind of like just coming off of me right now? It's kind of like a little bit of a dewiness. And I think it's a big factor in the look. I legitimately think that this was an important and necessary step to getting that end result that is just ethereal glam gorgeousness. It's sort of like the foundation I wish I'd been using all summer long. I mean, you can see it is not full coverage. It's kind of like a light to medium coverage and I'm sort of shocked at how much I love it still, but I love the look that it gives my skin. It actually wears beautifully. I've kept such tabs on this. I'm like, well, maybe it looks great at the start, but am I gonna start to see pores and like just a weird wear situation and I 
don't. I just like love this stuff. Now the concealer that was used in that video is called Magic Away. And this is another thing from the line that I just had never used. And I have it in the shade three. And this has quite a sizable little spongy area there. So you give it a little twist and you can use it here to brighten up the under eye. I mean, I felt like they used a fairly generous amount in that area. And this shade is bright enough on me. I can definitely highlight elsewhere on the face, get a little around the nose. And here I'm leaving this eye for a reason because I'm going to come in with something else. Um, I like this concealer and I honestly like everything I got. I like, don't get me wrong, but I just think there are some things that are more spectacular than others. And I feel like while this concealer works, there are so many drugstore concealers that like I really love. I think it certainly adds coverage to this look, but it's not maybe as much coverage as some of the other concealers that are out there like my e.l.f. or even that, um, you know, the L'Oreal version that's a lot like e.l.f.s and shape tapes. Now it does continue to leave this really pretty finish on the skin, but overall I feel like the weight of it, the way it blends, the finish on the skin is very similar to the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. And even the application, like it's got the little puffy thing there, and I'm going to go ahead and apply some of this over on this side because I feel like I get just the very same look. And this is in the shade Fair and this is in the shade 3 Fair. And I'll just blend this in. And again with this one, I feel like it's, it's great coverage. I think both of these steps are pretty darn good coverage, but neither of them are the fullest of the full. I feel like they both kind of keep skin still looking like skin. This might be a little more matte, but the weight, the feel you come away with on the skin is really, really similar between them both. Just think that's a place where I see an alternative, okay? Here is another thing, and this is something I already had on hand. Um, the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I have this in Fair. I've actually hit pan on this. Um, I think this is a nice little powder. I, I remember doing a video in the past where I'm like, I think it's a little overhyped. Like, I know people love this, but there are a ton of great, soft, beautiful powders out there. I've compared it to L'Oreal True Match before. As I've been testing this stuff, I was kind of thinking about my e.l.f. translucent powder, but like, it's a good powder, and I've liked it kind of gently setting the under eye, and they brought it in, and they went over that kind of area, and just talked about, you know, using it to really perfect the look. And so I'm using this over like half my face right now. And it does provide a little additional evenness, not a lot of extra coverage. That's not really what it's for. It's doing its job, but I just think there are a lot of other great powders. And one that's still, you know, they're not giving this stuff away. This is the MAC next to nothing. I have it in light plus, but it's a fraction of the cost of the Charlotte Tilbury and it really feels the same. The softness, the sort of expensive feel of that powder, I'm taking the Mac over here on this other side. Like it does not take your skin and turn it into this matte, like lack of life situation. It just sets it and you maintain this real skin-like look. I learned about this through Dustin Hunter's channel and I'm so glad I did. It's a really phenomenal powder. Um, and like I said, L'Oreal True Match, I don't have a shade right now in L'Oreal True Match that would match this as light as this is, but I think that's another powder that's really on par texture-wise with both of these. So yeah, the powder is another thing that I think it's kind of like a, a nice product, but it is replaceable. The next thing I went for is this Glowgasm Face Palette, and I got it in the Lightgasm shade. It's really beautiful packaging there. And then on the inside, you've got a bronzer shade, a very clear highlight, a little bit more of a peachy metallic highlight, and then this shade that's really still pretty much operates like a highlight. It's got a bit more pinky gold to it, but with the exception of the bronzer, just think it's a very glowy palette. And I'm going to go ahead and just use this bronzer all over. With this, like, I've used several different brushes in here. It's a very, like, kind of firmly pressed bronzer that is kind of light to begin with, and I don't feel like I end up picking up a ton on my brush, and yes, I've tried other brushes beyond this e.l.f. complexion one. Um, and then the rest of it, I was kind of hoping some of the other shades would be a bit more blushy than they are, 
um, they're really pretty highlights and they leave a stunning glow on the skin. I'm just kind of giving my cheekbones a little depth here. That's all I'm doing. See, the bronzer is doing something for me. It's just coming from a very, very subtle place. And I may not be right on with the sequence of products. I think for some reason this came in after this next step, but it doesn't really matter. But the actual blush that was used in the video, like this, this was the first thing I screenshotted. This was the thing that I knew I without a doubt needed because the glow and the look, the color left behind from this on the skin was so radiant and so gorgeous. And it's the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the color Pinkgasm. So when I saw this going across the model's face, I was like, that is an absolute necessity. And guess what? It is one of my favorite products that I got. It's not something that I feel is super just like, oh, I could replace that with this. Like, I, I don't have anything in mind that can really do this. Um, you've got a little unlocking mechanism right up there and then you're just going to squeeze it and you can tell when the top fills up with product. I am going to, you know, give myself quite a swipe here. And if you go and watch the Charlotte Tilbury tutorial, you'll see a pretty generous amount used. And then this is just a synthetic brush that I had on hand, an extra one. Um, and you just kind of swirl this in and you're getting your blush, but you're getting a beautiful, absolutely stunning glow with that. Oh, <laughs> it's throw my brush good. Got to start blending before it sets. It doesn't set too quick, but I just get worried. It is just the most radiant, beautiful thing. Look at that stunning, effortless glow. I just dabbed over it. It's just doing this continual like dab, dab, dab motion. I think that is just so pretty. I absolutely love that I have this. It's truly one of the best things that I got. Now going back to this palette, um, I think they did some layering with, I believe it was like this shade, um, some of the highlighter type shade. And because I do want you to get that full effect, I'm going to go ahead and use this on both sides of my face as well. Going into the little bit more pinky bottom shade, letting some of that dab over. We're basically layering up this glow with different textures. Um, I'm just blotting that on with my e.l.f. blush brush. I don't really want to change what's going on underneath. And then I think this highlighter right up here is probably one of the most spectacular things in this palette. Like it really shows it's really brilliant, you see. It's super radiant. It's like someone just turned on an additional light on your face or something. It's really nice. But now that I've used that, I mean, this is the complexion look that was created in that video. And I think it's downright, like, stunning and it's very glowing. It's very healthy looking. But I do kind of feel like this palette is not everything. There are just so many different multitasking palettes out there that I think do what this does, you know, offer you maybe a bronzer option and also the highlight, but the blush is more of a real true blush, you know? Like this California in a Box from Catrice is a nice multitasker. I'm not really claiming these to be dupes. They're just things I've really liked using. The Ulta Beauty Baked Sculpting Glow is gorgeous because the bronzer has a little glow. Both of these are stunning. And then this Milani palette. We'll get into this in a second a little bit more because I think it kind of dupes the eye palette that I got. But if you're after like really glowy blushes that are borderline highlights, this has a lot of that kind of vibe in it too. So I'm not really jumping up and down about this. I think it was this product that really offered the color to the cheeks that was so beautiful and also that glow that was not glittery, no sparkle, nothing weird looking. It just seemed to be radiating from within, you know? I love that. To me, it really was the skin element of the look that made me the most excited, the most like, I've got to try those products, you know? And then I just kind of casually followed suit with the eye and lip stuff because I'm like, well, that was really pretty too. Maybe I'll try to recreate the whole look. But it was the face that super wowed me. And it caused me to discover, I think, a really great foundation and like cream blush highlighty kind of product there. So what I'm going to do now, I'll go ahead and do my brows since it's not a Charlotte Tilbury product. I just get those out of the way. Probably use my Maybelline Tattoo Studio and um, then we'll do eyes. Alrighty friends, so brows are done. I've also got a little eye primer on and the quad that was used on the eyes of the model in the video is called the Dreamgasm Eyeshadow Palette. So it's got kind of like one of these sheer wash of sparkle type shades that sometimes turns up in these quads. And then the three others all do have some shimmer as well. You've got kind of a burgundy rust, a gold, and a champagne. And the look on the eyes was really pretty basic. Like I said, it's the kind of thing I could really see being 
being recreated out of a lot of different palettes. Don't get me wrong, it was pretty, it finished the look well, but the thing I was really, like I said, most enamored by was the skin. But I'm gonna use this on this eye, and then I'm gonna pull in something else that I think is a pretty good equivalent on my left eye. But first we're gonna dab into the rusty colored shade, and that's gonna become our crease. And I do love the blendability of especially the three shades, like the three shimmers, traditional shimmers, not the glitter. The glitter is fine if you apply it with your finger, and it's not like the most wild, bold glitter, but it is definitely like a, it's a fine sparkle, and I don't dislike it, um, but I just love the smoothness of the other colors. So I blended that in. I'm gonna kind of blend out my edge too. Now I think in the eye look they may have also dabbed on one of the highlights a little bit onto the lid from the Face Quad palette, but we're just gonna stick to this. Using that lightest shade up under my brow now. And then I think I'm gonna use kind of a combo of the lightest shade and the gold on the lid. Using this light color kind of around the inner corner, inner part of the lid, and then we'll dip into the gold and let that kind of cover the rest. Again, I know this isn't exactly what was done in the Charlotte Tilbury look, but there's honestly not a lot of different directions you're gonna go with this, so this is generally what was done. <laughs> now, I mentioned this palette from Milani being really great for that kind of glowy blush, borderline highlight look. Well, it's also great for recreating this particular eye look. Um, this rusty kind of color right here actually really closely mimics the shade that's in the Charlotte Tilbury palette. It doesn't really go quite as dark, like in a shade for shade swatch but by the time stuff's blended on the eyes like it really looks the same and then you've got a goldeny color that's just like the gold in here you've got a couple of different lighter highlights that can work for that the only thing you're lacking in here is the actual like sheer glitter color but I'm gonna use this over on this side and just show you how that works so again we're gonna go to this deepest copper shade that we have in here and we're gonna apply that to the crease I really did not enter into this whole, like, trying this look as a dupe-finding mission, you know? I just ended up thinking inevitably that some things were really worth it, and some things I just, like, had similar products already. Okay, so there's that rustiness in the crease. Then what did we do? We just kind of blended over the edge. I could take, like, maybe some of this light shade here and use that as my highlight up under the brow. And then I think we'll use a combo of these two colors just the same way I used the lightest and the gold on the other eye. So there's that little bit more champagne-y looking shade just right around the inner part and then we'll pull the gold to go right over here. I mean, it's just crazy what a similar look it is. Granted, the shades are kind of basic, but just adding a little more of the rusty shade to my crease but you know, those tones of rust and gold and champagne are all here, so. <laughs> in fact, I think the gold might be a little more intensely gold over on this eye. Like I'm gonna have to go back and build up some of this a bit more to meet it. Yeah, that's this color that I'm using the gold in here. I'm gonna also run a little bit of the rusty color down under the eye. Just a little bit with a pencil brush. And that means we'll be using this shade over on the Charlotte Tilbury side. Now, I forgot to say I also did not purchase an eyeliner for this look, but the model does end up with kind of a bit of a wing, so I'm just going to use what I've got here. This is my Too Faced Better Than Sex um, liner pen. I it may have even been a pencil that was used in that video. I don't quite recall, but it was just a subtle wing, really the kind of wing that I often do, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that, and we'll keep jugging along. For the lashes, there was a mascara used and then some false lashes were applied. Again, this really wasn't the focus of me like trying to replicate the look. It wasn't really all about the eyes for me. But I think the full fat lashes mascara was used on the model and this is actually the mascara. The legendary lashes is what came in kind of a deal with my quad. So I just went for that. Um, this mascara, I actually, I like it. I'm gonna continue like using it in my mascara rotation. With every passing time that I use, Use it, I like it a little bit better, and I think that's just, you know, the mascara aging that we often talk about. Like sometimes that formula just thickens up a little bit more to where you can more easily build it on itself. But it's a nice kind of fluffy natural bristle brush, and it builds quickly. It kind of reminds me of superhero in that respect. Like it just, you instantaneously see length. 
And what I mean by the age of it is like it's building on itself a little bit better now than it was when it was super brand new, just like earlier last week. Now on my lower lashes, I'm really not sure how that Legendary Lashes performs. I'm going to use my CoverGirl Supersizer. Um, you know I love this mascara. Just getting a bit of that on these lower lashes. In a rare turn of events, I over goop myself with Supersizer right there. Now I'm going to round up a bit of a false lash to add in here because the model does have that too, and then we'll do the lips. So for lashes, I needed something that would kind of give me some added length and drama toward the outsides. So I use these Salon Perfect. Um, they're the Silk Noir 652s. So it's just kind of what I had available at the moment, but I think it kind of helps intensify the eye a little bit bit more, kind of the way the tutorial went. Also, a couple things. This says Legendary Lashes Volume 2 on the tube. If anybody's really familiar with Charlotte Tilbury mascaras, maybe that means something to you. And also, the model on her lids, I remember now they used some kind of a rose gold colored cream base before the eyeshadow look. So mine is coming off because I tried to sort of stick to this a bit more because I wanted to offer up a dupe. Um, mine is a bit more golden on the lids and hers looks a bit more like pinky rose gold. Gold. But now for the lips. I got exactly what was used on the model because I thought it was totally gorgeous. That was the lip liner in the shade called Super Size Me. This is the Lip Cheat Lip Liner. It's kind of a bit of a dusty berry type look. And then the Collagen Lip Bath is what's on top. And I believe they used the shade called Rosy Glow. That's what it looks like. This comes in a few different sheer colors. Um, I really like this a lot. It kind of reminds me of the feel, the thickness, the texture of a Milani Keep It Full. Lip gloss, only I couldn't find a shade in my collection that was exactly like this. I'll swatch this color out for you. But like, you could definitely get some similar things. I was just turning up more shades that had shimmer in them, and this doesn't really have any shimmer. It's just like a sheer, soft, rosy gloss. So that was the lip combo. And I'm going to put both of those on for you today because I just want you to see it all fully recreated. But I did find a lip pencil that I think is pretty similar to Super Size Me, and it's from ColourPop, and it's in the shade called Bumble. So I'll just kind of draw this right over here. Sort of along the lines of that deeper rose look. It's really close. Um, I also was looking at Jordana's Baby Berry is another close shade. I almost feel like there's a bit more warmth in Bumble. But I guess what I'm getting at here is like, I love Super Size Me, but it doesn't seem like it's all that totally unique of a product. But I want to do the full lip look for you. So I am going to pop this on all over and fill in the lips. That's what they did. Special weather statement. Don't have time for it. The lips just look downright juicy at the end of this. But because I purchased this Super Size Me shade, you best believe I'm going to be using this. <laughs> it is a very, like, workable, nice shade. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to find any fault with it whatsoever. I just look at it and I kind of feel like, you know, there's got to be some stuff out there that's a lot like it. And then the Collagen Lip Bath with its funny little applicator there. It's almost like a heart-shaped applicator a little bit. It's a little bit wider toward the tip and it's got, like, two little yoinks coming off of it. But this, I feel, is a pretty important part to the look because I feel like for as glowy as the face and eyes are, the lips have to hold their own and just look super juicy and wonderful. And that's exactly what they did. It has that kind of like really sweet, just a, the teeniest hint of mint coming through in it. Very similar texture and thickness to Milani. The shine level, you know, that can be achieved through other things. But I really do like that look. Now, if I would have been 100% on my game today, I would have had the hot rollers in because the model kind of has that old school wave that I love. But we've got the glam side part going here, so I'll take it. But I've had so much fun playing with these products, familiarizing myself with more of Charlotte Tilbury's line. And I can say with confidence that I did like everything I got. Um, that being said, as we went along, you saw me point out some things that I felt were less unique than others. The three things that probably wowed me the most and made the biggest impact on me would be this Magic Eye Rescue, the eye cream sample, which I'm really thinking I'm going to purchase in a full size because I need an eye cream for, you know, under makeup. And I feel like everything, every time I've used this, things have worn so well. So that really, really impressed me. Also, I 
I love the Light Wonder Foundation. I mean, it is so light on the skin and it lets a certain amount of your skin show through. It's not full coverage. It's somewhere in that light to medium bracket. You know, definitely more than tinted moisturizer, but less than a lot of foundations I tend to gravitate towards. So it surprised me. But the look of my skin is just so fresh and radiant with it on. Like, it's undeniable. I love that. And I think that was a really key part of establishing the look. And then this um, Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the pink gasm shade that really served as our blush and a lot of the glow that's happening on the skin. I love that. I do really like the collagen lip bath, so that's kind of like lurking on the outside of that top three. I mean, I think it's gorgeous. I think the Super Sizer lip liner is also very pretty. There's just a lot of me that has to look at this lip color and say, I know that kind of vibe is out there. Oh, the concealer also. I mean, I like the Magic Away. I think it works well. I think it's a great texture. I just feel like the concealing step of this whole routine doesn't have to be that. The Maybelline eraser is really similar, especially like the tone of both of these. They really mimic one another, but the texture as well. And if you've got that beautiful foundation all over your skin, I just feel like you can sneak in a different concealer and make the look still work. The mascara, now this was not what was used in that little um, Instagram tutorial. I really liked it. I don't think I would seek it out to repurchase it. I don't quite feel that strongly about it, but I'll continue to use it. Again, I think there are lower cost alternatives to this pressed powder. This face quad, I do feel like the makeup marketplace is crawling with, you know, face palettes that offer you the glow, the blush, the bronzer, and I wasn't all that impressed by the bronzer, and otherwise I was just left with three super glowy shades, which were beautiful, but I almost like a multitasking palette to incorporate a bit more blush. I think this is a good alternative, and I mentioned some other things that I like as well, just face palette-wise, but this also happens to be a great alternative to the Dreamgasm eyeshadow quad. And this is the Luminoso Glow Palette from Milani. I reviewed it in a bite-sized review on my channel already. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm just gonna go about my day with my ethereal goddess uh, makeup look now. I feel so glowy, so fresh. Let me know if you've tried any of these products. What did you think of them? Did you run across the same little demo I did on Instagram? And what were your thoughts on that? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.